Alright, here we go. Spring is finally here. Time for another gun video. Right, Charlie? Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, well, you know, these Mosines are very popular. Um, I myself have three. Um, I got a, a hex receiver, 9130. Uh, round receiver wartime uh, 9130 and an M44. And I really thought I had uh, pretty much run the gambit with the Mosines. I mean, what more are you going to do? You know, the uh, I'm going to throw up a video with the hex receiver one. I uh, scoped it using a brass stacker, <coughs> which is a, uh, a non intrusive scope mount. It doesn't do any um, permanent modification to the gun. Not that permanently modifying a Mosin is even really a big deal. They're, they're just so plentiful that as much as you hate to see anybody butchering anything or drilling a scope mount, for a Mosin, if you were intending to keep it that way, wouldn't necessarily think it was a horrible thing to do. But uh, since mine was a 35 hex receiver that I was doing it to, I did want to do something a little, uh, you know, non-permanent. You know what I mean? And the brass stacker is definitely a good, uh, a good option. I'm going to put up a video with that. But, uh, you know, you don't really know where else to go with the Mosines. And uh, I've heard of these Finnish ones. I've seen a couple of ones here and there. You know, I, I've definitely seen them in magazines and on videos online. I didn't really think it was even an area I needed to move into. I was like, you know, Finnish ones? Hey, whatever. They, the, the Finns modified them. What did they do? I wasn't really sure what they did with them. But let me tell you, once I got uh, a little bit of information, I saw one of these things and I got a little, a little bit of information, I went and I uh, grabbed one of these and uh, uh, boy am I glad that I did. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to be able to give you any knowledge on this this uh, M39 here that uh, you're not going to be able to find out online. Uh, over the past few weeks, I've been pouring over different videos and watching videos that people have posted and they have a wealth of information on these uh, much more information that uh, I would just be you know uh, reciting the same information that I heard from them uh, but what I can do is I could just give you from a uh, standpoint of a Mosin owner that wants to or is thinking of moving into one of these and getting one of these um, why should they what are they going to experience that's different and, uh, you know, how, how on these, what, what stands alone with these that it's going to bring to the table for them. And I'll tell you, first of all, what it's going to bring to the table is uh, a Mosin feel, a, a, a Mosin, um, you know, the, the, the whole Mosin thing going on with quality. These are a quality firearm. Um, what they do, the finish, what they what they did when they made these things were, they started with the older um, hex receivers, and not just hex receivers. Like I said, I have a hex receiver that's got a 1935 date on it. They basically started with the ones that were, you know, when you say Mosin, you say 9130 that they were originally designed in 1891, and in 1930 was the redesign. Um, where they, uh, or the more modern ones, the ones that they made 17 million of, were more in that vein, the ones that were modified after 31, you know. And again, I don't really have enough knowledge to know exactly what was done after 1931, where it actually became its own model, not 100% sure. But, uh, but these, the finish, they actually started with the 1891 receivers. This receiver itself, so the receiver being everything from where this hand is back. So it's the it's the um, the whole bolt area, the receiver here, bolt area, and uh, trigger, and magazine. It's from a, uh, this one is from an 1897. You can get that number uh, when you take it apart off the back of the tang, which is the very, very far back piece here that's underneath the uh, cocking piece. Uh, when you turn it upside down, you'll see a date there and the manufacturer. This one happens to be a 19, I'm oh, sorry, an 1897 Tula. And um, the bolt 
you'll see that they they scrub it and they'll put the the bolt they'll put the serial number on the bolt. But the bolt pieces, I hear that you'll see a lot of them that are the old school bolt pieces, the ones that you don't really see with the 9130s too much. This has a Remington cocking piece, and it has uh, the old school Tula uh, markings on it, uh, the inspection marks and things like that on the bolt. Um, on the magazine, you're going to see an HV on them for the most part. I mean, I think that's what would make them correct. I don't know if any didn't come that way. But um, it, it basically stood for uh, no jam or something like that in, uh, in uh, their language in um, Finnish. Where uh, they did something to the magazine to open it up because their version of the 7.62 by 54 um, was a little bit longer. The bullet was a little bit heavier. And uh, since they couldn't necessarily make the bullet wider, it's obviously a little bit longer. And it... Um, they had to open up the magazine a little bit to uh, make the bullets be able to flow through. And um, it definitely helps when you're using the Russian surplus 762 by 54 I definitely noticed that it loads and feeds uh, much better than the common Mosin Nagant. Um, okay, well, another thing with these is that the barrels are not the regular barrels that would come on a Mosin Nagant. The barrel is the thing that the Finns put on here. And uh, let me tell you, these things are they're a little bit shorter. They're like uh, the barrel's a couple of inches shorter than a 9130 barrel. And overall, they're like three inches shorter overall, the, the whole gun. So that, I guess that would mean that the stock is slightly shorter. And uh, although they're shorter and smaller, they're heavier. So that should tell you something about the barrel. These barrels are heavy, and they're quality barrels, and from what I hear, when uh, you take a bore light, you know, you, you're in the gun store and you put bore lights through these things, you see shiny, clean, nice bores for the most part. I mean, of course, there could be ones that weren't stored properly or taken care of properly, and there could be issues, but this one had a beautiful barrel. Now, the barrels are manufactured by, you hear those names like Seiko, I think it's Seiko, if I'm pronouncing these wrong, I'm sorry. And uh, let me see, this one is a VKT. And there's one other manufacturer that I can't really remember. Um, this happens to be a VKT barrel. And you'll see an SA stamp on these. The SA stamp on these is basically for the Finnish Army. It's not really a manufacturer. It's kind of like the equivalent of, of, a, of a Grand being stamped U.S. And then the Grand would be made by Winchester or be made by Springfield or be made by you know different manufacturers. And that's why the, the VKT and the Seiko are the different manufacturers of the barrels. But they'll all be stamped SA, which is just a designation for Finnish Army. Um, and this one has a D stamped on it. That has something to do with it letting you know that the uh, barrel is set up for, the, uh, for the, this, this other special type of ammo that the Finns use. So it... it I think I read that it might even be that the barrel's a little bit tighter tolerance. Um, but whatever they do to these things, they shoot, man. I was putting at 50 yards, you know, I was going to have the target ready because uh, I was at the range like a week ago and I was going to have the target out to show you what I did at 50 yards. But I stuck it in with all my targets and now in the middle of a video I don't feel like getting up and digging through it. But trust me, at 50 yards, I was grouping like this. And this is just elbows on the bench. This isn't like, uh, you know, using sandbags or anything. Just elbows on the bench. And being casual, I wasn't really even bearing down. You know, you put the first 15, 20 rounds through a gun, you really, you're just feeling it out or just, you know, you're concentrating on a lot of other things besides just necessarily looking downrange. And then when I pulled up my glass and I looked and saw where it was grouping, I was amazed. Right on target, I mean point of aim, because, you know, this... The graduations on this uh, site here, which is a much better site, even by the way, than the uh, than the Mosin site. It's an it's an awesome site, and um, the graduations start at uh, 1.5. So I guess that would be 150 meters, I suppose. And uh, or actually, the finish might have still been using that other weird unit of measure that wasn't the U.S., you know, it wasn't yards and it wasn't meters, it was something else. I forget exactly what it's called, but... 
Well, let's put it this way. You'd expect it to be a little bit high, because at 50 yards is definitely not 1.5 of whatever these things are. And it was just a touch high. So uh, I'm pretty sure if you were shooting at whatever this graduation was supposed to be, whatever this 1.5 was, uh, maybe that'd be closer to like maybe 100 yards, and uh, it would have been right on. It would have been perfect. You know what I mean? Sighted and just perfect. The front sight is uh, also a little bit different. And what's interesting is this, uh, this relief right here in the front of the front sight and there's a, a muzzle cover that goes over here and clips right over that, that piece right there. I got that in the mail. Unfortunately, I don't have it for the video because it's uh, in the mail on the way to me. But uh, that's a nice little cool addition. And the front sight is uh, adjustable for windage um, right here using that, uh, that screw there. You can see there's little dots there that yeah, I could actually use as, you know to... Uh, Supposedly one one dot is a certain amount of uh, distance at a certain amount of yards. You know, you read that and come up with exactly what it is. But basically, if you're tracking a little bit to the right, you know, you do a click, you see where it comes out. Um, but having it adjustable for windage is, is also really nice. I was all excited to be able to actually do it, and then I uh, didn't even need it. it. It certainly didn't have any windage problems. It was, it was definitely right on line. Um, these stocks are... Uh, you know, put on in such a way with that make the barrel free floating. So you see, when you when you get one of these and you take it apart, you got to be careful. It's not going to be your regular mosin that you just you know bang them apart, throw the parts there, do this. You have to watch out that inside there's spacers. There could potentially be spacers. Um, I did have um, a couple, and as careful as I was being, I saw where one was, and I was like, okay, this one was right there. I took a picture with my phone. I knew right where it was. I put the you know receiver and the barrel off on the side, and I took the stock pieces apart, I took the trigger group out, I was moving things, and all of a sudden I saw one, a little teeny square plate just laying there on the table, and I had no idea where it came from. I looked and I looked to see if I could see a space where, you know, a mark inside the stock where it came from, but it was so clean inside, unfortunately, not much cosmoline to leave a trace. I had no idea where it came from. Um, I still have it over here, actually. It's sitting just for, in case I come up with uh, a place exactly where this little thin square was, this little wafer. I'm sure it mattered, but um, the big one, uh, I did see where it was, and I can tell that with that in place that it bedded nicely when I put everything back together, but I sure wish I knew where that little teeny one went. Don't make that mistake. When you take it apart, be very careful. Inspect it very carefully, because one of those could just be sitting somewhere, you know. I'm sure eventually I'll find out a, a place, so I'll take it apart again and take a look again and maybe see a place that that could have possibly been, but luckily I went to the range after all of that, and it was shooting perfectly, so uh, I don't think I'll, I will I don't think I really need to worry about it too much, but uh, it's something that you should look out for when you take them apart. Um, the stocks have a, uh, a pistol, a more of a, you know, pistol grip feel here, which is weird because you're going older, uh, you know, you're moving into, uh, this was a, a 1941 receiver, you see a lot of straight stocks then. It was, uh, Charlie, what's going on? I'm looking at your ace. But uh, it's, it's, it's nice to actually have, uh, you know, a more conventional, a much more comfortable, it's fatter. It's definitely a, a nice feel in your hands when, when you shoot this thing, you know. Um, sling mounts are a little bit different. No holes cut through. Uh, the stock, there's um, sling mounts for a bottom mount, which is just the regular infantry mount. And then they have... Uh, this cutout on the side with uh, a, a side sling swivel uh, was supposedly for uh, ski troops or bicycle troops or horseback. And uh, just the thought of uh, a guy on skis, you know, going 40 miles an hour past a bunch of Russian dudes and clipping one of them on, on skis, that's just, that's an awesome visual right there. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, these things are these things are well worth. Uh, if, if, especially if you're a Mosin guy, you just got to get one of these. You have to have one of these. They're amazing. Um, a couple of the drawbacks with these. One of them is that the bayonet, unfortunately, is one of those impossible to find bayonets. And if you find one, 
Um, they're going for psychotic prices. As of, as of now, right now as I'm making this video, there's one posted on Gunbroker that I saw for 600 bucks, And not another one anywhere. I couldn't find one anywhere else. eBay, even just doing regular Google searches online, nothing. Plenty of pictures, plenty of videos with people coveting theirs, but nothing for sale. 600 bucks. Forget it. There's got to be another option. Yes, there is. Um, there's a couple of aftermarkets. Um, one of them is uh, it's a dark blade, um, like a, a blued uh, blade, and not such great quality. I wouldn't go for one of those. Um, they do make this GSA company makes this guy, and um, I got this one uh, from Empire Arms. It comes with, uh, it's, a, it's a very high quality piece. Um, it's almost like a collector's uh, piece in its own right because the, uh, the gentleman that, uh, he wrote a book on these rifles and, uh, the, and he's the one that commissioned these and like worked with a company to make them and, uh, and to make them as correct looking as possible and, uh, and they came up with this nice um, frog, I'm sorry, um, a bay, a scabbard that... Um, uh, follows the original one uh, nicely and uh, this guy from what I've read has passed away and uh, the ones that were made were made and that's it they're not making any more of these either you know what I mean so uh, these have become a collector's piece in its own right these are even numbered but um, just the quality of this is, is really nice and uh, they, they make them nice so you can't try to you know pass it off as uh, as real because they put a uh, 1999 date on there, as you can see in the uh, you know the manufacturer's uh, uh, the manufacturer's mark, which is good because you you know you know if it's something that's that coveted, I mean eventually maybe one day I'll find one of the originals you know and it would kind of be it would take away from it if there were a lot of fakes out there that people were passing off as real. It kind of takes away from you having an original one, but uh, so it's kind of cool that they did make it look very real, like very much. Uh, like the original, but uh, marked it just so, you know, everybody knows this is a, uh, you know, this is aftermarket, and, uh, but it's a, it's a nice quality piece, uh, you know, goes on nice, looks good, and uh, sure saved me from having to, uh, you know, spend much more than I spent on this rifle just on a bayonet, you know, so, uh, so that's it, the, uh, the M39. It's uh, it's definitely a great addition to a uh, Mosin collector's repertoire, and um, definitely better than your general Mosin Nagant. The, the fins definitely um, made some serious improvements with these things, and uh, it is interesting to see. You know, uh, after just messing with Mosins for so long now, it, it is interesting to actually, you know, have some some barrel bands that are just uh, nice that you don't have to like tear the wood up to pull off. They just kind of un, un, uh, unhinge with these nice hinges and uh, you know everything from the cleaning rod to uh, you know to like I said the sights and, uh, and the rear sight. It's just a, a real quality piece. There's also some dude on on the uh, message boards for the I think it's the Mosin message boards that makes a uh, peep sight that screws on here because there's just two little screws that come off here that uh, take off this rear notch and it was uh, supposedly a piece that's nice machined, blued, that you just screw it right on here and without any modify, you could you know go back to this site again you don't have to actually permanently modify anything and um, and it looks very stock in that you wouldn't even have to adjust the sights the uh, it's a, a peep sight and the peep ends up, uh, you know, in the exact same spot where your rear notch is, so you wouldn't even necessarily mess up your sights. And uh, I emailed this guy, seeing if he had any more, because this thread was from like a year ago. And uh, see if I hear back from him, and he's still making those things. But I might actually get one of those and put that on, because that that sounds kind of interesting. Everybody loves peep sights. Seems like the older you get, the more you like peep sights. Don't know why that is, but just turned 46, and uh, I'm sure into the peep sight thing. I, I got to admit start to not be able to see these uh, little tiny notches, you know, um, they start to, they start to just make you blink 10,000 times. Um, slings are available, got this on eBay, um, just poke around a little bit, you know, you, there's some that look kind of crappy, and uh, 
and others that are this uh, nice soft leather, um, and the other there's some that are kind of plasticky. So uh, just you know, you search around, see that someone's selling one that looks like this this nice kind of uh, it's like suede on the back and the uh, smooth leather on the front. You know, you try to find a guy that's selling one of those. And uh, that's it. I think I have a video of uh, me shooting it and uh, might post that up. But uh, you know, a lot of interesting markings. You see that uh, that L with the uh, that cross with the L in it there denotes the uh, stock manufacturer. They had different manufacturers for the stocks. And one cool thing about this guy is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, on the top of the receiver, right on top of my middle finger there, you can just about make it out, is the, uh, the Russian, uh, the Russian inspection mark right up there on the top. And a lot of times you'll see with these, it's kind of like a, an oval indentation. They scrub it. The fins would scrub that. Um, this one is a 1941 receiver. Don't know why it isn't, uh, it isn't scrubbed like that, but it doesn't have that little depression where they took that out. They they left that uh, that Russian uh, um, inspection mark there on the top. So uh, I was pretty happy with this one. I'm you know I just kind of bought it blind. I didn't really know much about them. I just uh, started to kind of do a little research and read a little bit about them. And then when I ran into that one, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get one of these. And uh, as it is, I just got good luck. I mean, uh, sometimes I buy stuff blind like that where I don't know much about it. Then when I do my research, I realize that I, I picked up one that was kind of like a score. You know, I've just been lucky in my mill syrup collecting that I haven't really gotten burned, where after I buy one, I read, and I'm like, they're like, don't get one of these. And I'm like, I just put one of those. You know, that doesn't happen to me uh, much, thank God. So uh, I did get lucky with this one, but now... Uh, like I said, after doing a little bit of research, you know, look look at the videos that you see out there on these, and uh, and uh, if what I said uh, gels with you, and you think that as a Mosin owner or as a, a Millsurf collector, see the thing with me is, I've bought so much of that uh, 7.62 by 54 round, thinking that this Millsurf is going to disappear because it always does. It, it seems like it's going to last forever, but it never does. As a matter of fact, I went on Wideners and I saw that the uh, the Russian and Bulgarian uh, 762 by 54 r actually says uh, sold out, don't have any more, waiting for... I've never seen... in years I haven't seen that, and now it seems like, uh, you know, Mosines are getting pretty popular and people are kind of uh, scooping it up. So, um, I have so much of it that I'm like... It's, it actually... it's cool to pick up something that... Uh, don't have to buy a new round for, and uh, you know, I, I, I just have so much of it here that it's like, uh, makes it fun. Don't have to, you know, I remember when I bought my Swedish Mauser, I was like, now there's no Millsurp 6.5 by 55, you know, and uh, now I have to start buying like, you know, boxes of 20 PPU, uh, you know, and, and that gets expensive, and, and, and I had none of it, so I'm like, oh, now I gotta like, you know, stock up or, uh, you know, you have to be able to, to, to just be able to pull another round out of the out of the drawer when you want to go to the range. Um, with these, what's cool is, um, you know, if you have a couple of Mosines and you want to move into these, you uh, you pick one of these up and uh, you got the same ammo, you know what I mean? You got the same, uh, that same Russian ammo. So, enjoy, and uh, I'll try to get my cigarette lit. And leave any comments, you know, if you pick one of these up. One of my, like, nine subscribers. Um, leave a message for me and uh, let me know how you're liking it. And uh, that's the M39. Take care.